what is up everybody the hunter gt with the hunter gt.com that's right go check out the website what is going on today the xp deus 2 review video that's what's going on today coming at you happy times indeed you've seen a couple hunt videos from me the old lake a couple times at the old park i've been testing and detecting out a couple times off camera as well found some silver about 10 wheat pennies that rad 1800 button I showed you, some good stuff indeed. And a darn 1977 penny, dang it. Very good detector, in my opinion. It's good stuff. Is it as good as all the hype out there on YouTube and the forums and the channels, you know? I don't know. That's up for you to decide, I guess. I'm not going to sit here and hype you to death and tell you you're an idiot for using any other detector than this one. Uh, that's not my agenda. I, I'm a multi-brand dealer. I want you to purchase this detector from me, hopefully, but I'm not going to call you an idiot because you use something else or you're not, you know, in the financial situation to buy something else and talk down to you because you can't afford this or that or the other. Just because this detector is out does not mean your detector no longer works as good as it used to. It will still find the same items that it would before this detector released so keep that at heart pay no attention to the hype to anybody that talks down to you like you're a moron or anything like that it's silly we don't need it in the hobby you're all awesome as far as i'm concerned and i'm not trying to be cliche here we're not going to hold hands and sing kumbaya get your hands off me stop touching me but i'm just saying you know it, it, it's getting ridiculous it's getting ridiculous so the xp deus 2 great detector i am a dealer you want to pick one of these bad boys up? Who are you going to contact me? Of course, the hunter GT at gmail.com is my email address. I would love and appreciate your business. I am a dealer for all of those rad companies you see down on the bottom of your screen. So I have no dog in this fight. I could honestly care less which detector you buy as long as you buy it from me. Right? Right? Yeah. There we go. All right, guys. So we are going to be doing number one. It, it's it's going to be a two-part video. There's no way I can put this all in one video. I would like to babble a lot, as you can already tell. Um, I'm going to go over the complete layout that you see right now, everything in the box, and the remote control, the menu in the remote control from head to toe, uh, top to bottom, basically. So that's going to be one video. It's probably going to take a half hour to 45 minutes. So that's this video. Then coming up this weekend, hopefully I will have the performance portion done where we will do soil depth test here in my nasty California soil. We will test small gold. We will test jewelry, coins. We'll air test. We'll do nail tests. We'll run it through the old Hunter GT paces like we always do on these review videos. So it will be a two-part video. And after that, in the following weeks, we will be putting it head-to-head -head against the CTX 3030, the Equinox 800. And no, I am not a mind lab dealer anymore. That's why I'm going to be doing some of these comparison videos now. I feel like I'm not going to get in trouble if I do that, so I can. And no, I'm not going to crap on them or anything like that. I'm going to show it how it is. If the CTX wins, if the Equinox wins, it wins. It is what it is. I'm not lying to anybody. But I'm not going to sit here and hype this up or hype any detector up or call anybody an idiot because you use them. It To me, it's just to see what does what and... It's more fun, the technological aspects and how they hit each target and stuff. I'm not here to see who's the best and who's better and who has the fastest race car and all that stuff. Yeah, that's irrelevant to me. It's elementary. It's childish, and I'm just not interested. If that's your gig and you're into that, more power to you. I'm not hating on you. I ain't crapping on you. None of that stuff. So anyways, let's check it out, and then we will take a deep dive into the remote control. What comes in the box while you're looking at it? The S telescopic. S telescopic rod right there. You can see it. Looks pretty cool. It's super lightweight. The grip, phenomenal. I tell you what, I love this grip. It's like a car tire. It's hard yet soft at the same time. I can't explain it, but it's a super, super good grip. I'm a big fan of it. Be careful with these uh, these little clicky things. You will pinch your finger on the end of them. Keep clear of this end when you let the shaft in and out on the top and bottom. Let me tell you, you will pinch your finger. You will curse. You will say, oh, Hunter GT warned me. I didn't listen. I should have listened to Hunter GT. Yeah, you will definitely pinch your fingers right on that curved end. Keep your finger away from there. I did it twice in a row before I learned my lesson. And I said, okay, 
I'm an idiot after number one. After number two, <laughs> I'm slobbering on myself. Uh, n- number three is not happening. It's not happening again. So there is where the remote connects in. Right there, it's the same connection as the XP Orcs and the Deus One connection. Different shaft. Um, this shaft is a little bit lighter. It's better built, in my opinion, than the Orc shaft. Not hating on it. I do... <clears throat> excuse me i do wish that the end here it does fall over i do wish that this was a little bit longer and i do wish there was just some thin padding right here it does help um you know that, that's just a nitpicky thing but uh no qualms with that i do wish the bottom lower shaft here was carbon fiber i absolutely wish that it does have graduations on it uh, as you can see it takes the let me see if i can get it to there we go so it takes the little rubber thing on one side only, right there on that side. So it only has one rubber grommet. You can see the graduations on it here. One, two, three, four, five. It is hollow, plastic. I wish it was carbon fiber. It's super lightweight. So I don't think it would matter as far as weight goes, but as far as rigidity, it would matter. Because with this 11 inch coil, it does have a little bit of flex to it. It absolutely has a little bit of flex, undeniably. Not, oh my God, this sucks type flex or anything like that that we've had on other detectors recently. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's noticeable for sure. I definitely feel that they built it around the 9-inch coil. The 11 inch coil is slightly nose heavy. It's not a deal breaker or anything like that. It doesn't. But if you try to swing it as hard as the 9 inch coil or as fast, because let's be honest, XP detectors, you can swing them pretty darn fast. Um, they have phenomenal recovery speeds. So you want to swing it a little bit faster than 9 inch. If you try to do that with the 11 inch, you are going to get a sore wrist eventually, but it's nothing that you won't correct mentally right away and then it goes away. It's not heavy by any stretch of the imagination. Little cheap plastic case for the WS6 headphones. I got to tell you, once you take them out of this, they're pretty hard to get back in. I can't hardly get them back in. I gave up. Not going to use it ever again. So in my opinion, these WS6 headphones are the biggest negative in the box. For the price you pay, these are $349 map price. $349 is the price for these. And it's all right here in this puck. Yes, I realize it's small. It's supposed to be mounted on the end here. Yeah, but they didn't even put that mount thing in the box you have to buy the adapter to mount this on the end of the stem for the price that should be in the box in my opinion um xp come on man i'm not i'm not gonna let you get away with it just because i'm a dealer i'm not afraid of you um but yeah so i this is but this style of headphone i much prefer if they would have put the wsa 2 xl the extra large ones the over ear style these are like flimsy cheap bendable yeah i realize that they fold in and they're made to be compact and all that stuff but i hate the fact that they go behind your neck this part goes behind your head and these parts go like wrap inside of your ear here and press on the inner side of your lobe if you wear glasses it's a big no-go. If you have long hair, like I do, um, or if you're a woman with long hair, these are terrible. They don't feel good at all. I'm not sure why they keep making these. XP, stop making these type of headphones. Nobody likes using this style of headphones. People like any other style but this. Uh, I'm sure someone in the comment section, I love these style Hunter GT. They're my favorite style. I love it. But it's rad. It completely controls the remote. Uh, these headphones right here, you can leave the remote at home. But And this is what they're going to package in with the light versions and all that. But we already have the remote. I don't see why we need this. I would rather have over-the-ear big style headphones than this. To each their own, if you like it, congratulations this is my opinion like i said grain of salt all these videos are just everybody's opinion this is mine unfiltered has a little case here magnetic flap for the remote you have the screen side on that side and then the little hole right here is where 
that little port goes through right there. So you can keep this on it at all times and keep it on your hip or whatever. It's got a little belt loop thing right there. So it's pretty cool, pretty cool. I don't use it personally, but I can definitely see people who would use it. I keep my remote on the end of the stem. Personally, I know a lot of people put it in their shirt pocket or utilize this and, and just keep it on their hip. This has one of the loudest speakers I have ever heard on any detector. So it is ultra loud, um, it, by far the loudest when you max it out. And a cool thing, you can control the volume on this and that at the same time. So they can come through the headphones and the speaker makes YouTube videos pretty easy. You just adjust it, crank this up real quick. You can hear the beats through the speaker on camera and then I can mute it so I don't disturb everybody at the park when, and just hear them through the headphones after that. So it's pretty cool. You dual audio, you can run the audio through multiple devices at once. So I can, it's loud, loud, loud. I can definitely see how people use it on their hip or put it in their shirt pocket. Probably uh, vibrates their chest. You might not want to use it with the pacemaker. So comes with little coil bolt attachment attachments right here. Not my favorite coil bolt setup. I think Fisher Technetics does it the best with their two bolt setup, but uh, these are pretty sturdy. I got to admit, I don't think this coil ear will be breaking anytime soon on this coil. We have a little arm strap right here, a little thin one. This one's off the orcs. I just laid it in here so you guys could see it. This is the data cable it's a micro usb type it's that old style like mini mini usb i don't know what micro mini whatever it's that old box style like three generations of cell phone back or whatever they're still using the style xp come on where's usb c usb c let's go let's catch up we're in 2022 all you detecting companies stop using these old not just xp not the macro garrett fisher everybody stop using these old style USB-C, baby, let's go. But this one is for data to update the or the uh, headphones here. So you see this thing here? You have to use this to update the firmware in these to 0.6. It's going to come with 0.4 most likely. Newer, mine came with 0.4. Yours may come with 0.6. So it only does data with this cable. This trio of cables right here, this one, this micro one here or mini mini micro whatever it is does not do data it is charge only and yes they are still using the clip thingy for the coil you need the strength of hercules to get those things to open up i mean it is ridiculously hard it, it's it's a pain it's a big negative for me too i hate it on the orcs i hate it on the dais i hate it on the dais too so now they have this proprietary connection a little six pin din connection for the back of the remote this is to update it and you will need to use this if you want wired headphones they sell an adapter now so it's not like the orcs where at the bottom of the remote you have usb and headphone there's nothing here to unload it's all let's get it open it's going to be that connection right there that is going to be your charge your data and if you want wired headphones that's where it's going to go like the bone conduction headphones are going to go in there so there you go so it's built well we'll go over the menu part in the next little section of this video built extra well it's shockproof 20 meters 66 feet of depth depth ip68 so yeah you can definitely take it you do need to connect the wire it's in that bag we'll take a look at it here so the screen as you'll see in the next portion can be comically small some of the fonts and stuff like that buttons feel great i wish that they would have moved these buttons down a little bit and utilize this bottom area a little more and even this top area you know i get it you want to put your logo in you want to put your logo in maybe there's electronics here that they can't use i don't know i'm not an electrical engineer i didn't design it but i feel they could have made the buttons slightly smaller and utilized more screen space. I, I wish the screen was another inch longer or whatever. It's it's pretty high pixel density. It's like 8,192 pixels or something like that, pixel density. So it's a decent screen and all that, but it's just really small. Some of the font, if you wear glasses or hard of seeing, hard vision, yeah, you're not gonna have fun. If you're hard of hearing, no problem. This remote control will blow your ears off. So very well built. Um, it's got like these little star screws in it everywhere. You can take it apart and they actually sell, XP sells replacement parts for just about everything. 
tough to come by, back ordered usually, but there you go. We will go over the remote in the next bit. And the F F M F four to forty five kilohertz. So there's seven different frequencies, and then every seven frequencies have seven offsets. So you know, because it's 49 frequencies total, but when you look 4 to 45, that's not 49 frequencies. I know math. Yeah, it's only 41 frequencies. You know, there's 49 because, like, if you go to 7 kilohertz, you have 6, 5, 4 on the low end, and then you have 8, 9, 10 on the high end. And then when you go to, you know, 15 kilohertz, you have 14, 13, and then you have 16, 17, or, or whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. So you have seven total offsets for each thing, and they don't tell you what it uses in the multi-frequency modes. They kind of tell you where it caps off at. You know, like this mode uses frequencies up to 24 kilohertz. This mode uses frequencies up to 45 kilohertz. This one uses frequencies up to this, but they don't tell you what frequencies weighing or anything like that. You'd have to get it on a scope. comes with a coil cover on bottom, and that little clip is where that clip-on thingy goes to charge the battery there. Little blinking light right here stays on when it's charging, starts blinking intermittently when it's done charging and then it blinks non-stop so you're going to sit it in the corner of your room when you're watching tv or something like that and you're going to see blinking out of the corner of your eye and trust me it's going to bother you and you're going to move it away i've done it with my orcs i've done it with this already literature right here we have the deus manual in the box and it is quite filled with information it's already outdated mine it came with firmware 4 and now they have firmware 6 out already so outdated and then we have uh, the battery charger extra cable bolts a little lanyard for your wrist to go through the bottom of the remote and then this is the wiring here for the antenna the way it clips on with the little red plug you can see this gray plug here on bottom is for land use and you got to take that little plug out and stick this red one in if you want to go diving down to the full 20 meter 66 foot depth uh have fun with that i'm not i'm not swimming with the fishes baby hey yo I ain't swimming with no fishes but yeah there it is there it is there it is i'm never going to use it probably just going to stay in the box or in the bag forever so there it is we will take a look at the stuff in the menu in the next section here real quick i do have a list here this is one detector i i pride myself on never using a list and i can rattle off 90 percent of this off the top of my head but yeah i had to highlight some stuff here so 49 single frequencies 4 to 45 kilohertz 99 levels of sensitivity uh different sound types pwm and square uh, I'll show that off. PWM is the classic deus type. Square sounds like an equinox, basically. I don't know why anybody would use square over PMM, PWM, but to each their own. Ten levels of audio. Um, reactivity, nine levels. Zero, 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, so in half increments, and then 3, 4, and 5. Eight levels of audio response. So audio response is pretty neat. I will definitely show that off. And the performance um, and maybe... Yeah, in the performance video, I'll show that off. The audio response is pretty neat. It is modulation, basically, and it is fantastic, in my opinion. Iron volume, six levels, you know, multi-tone, one, two, three, four, five tones, pitch, full tones, one and two, expert mode, ground balance, tracking, grab, you know, you can pause the video here and look it over if you want. I'm just kind of going over some of it. 12 factory programs, 12 user programs, um, 20 levels of adjustability, very low power, consumption for the backlight 20 levels of adjustability for the backlight yeah 801 what 8192 pixels on display screen um weights here uh, 150 grams on the remote 370 grams on the stem um looks like the 11 inch coil that i have is 470 grams so you guys can convert that to ounces pounds whatever so 58 centimeters to 130 centimeters folded to extended on the shaft. Zero to 40 degrees Celsius is operating temperature. You're looking at about a three hour charge time for everything with that little triple cord. 15 to 30 hours on the remote control, depending on audio output activated. 15 hours on the headphones, eight to 20 hours on the coil. And they've said, I've read somewhere it said, oh, the coil with good charging techniques will last up to 10 years. However, 
there's only a two-year warranty on the lithium ion lithium poly batteries inside the coil the headphones and the remote so yeah i don't think they have much faith on that i've never heard of a lithium battery lasting 10 years like that if it does it is severely degraded at that point and you'll definitely need a replacement by then so two-year warranty on the batteries five-year warranty on everything else on the remote and everything so as long as you don't break it yourself you know it manufacturer error and stuff like that so there it is guys there is everything that came in the box so let's take a deep dive into this remote i mean we're already 20 minutes in i told you it'd be a long video we're gonna take a deep dive into this remote i'll try to make that in about 20 25 minutes and we'll call this a video all right so here we go with the remote control hopefully it doesn't take as long as i think it might so power on you see the little power on button right there in the corner by my fingernail there right at the end the top left so you hold that up arrow so you see three up arrows right here then plus minus and the pinpoint button so we see version 0.6 serial number of the unit now we have our option it's pairing with the remote or the uh, coil so we have option for headphones speaker headphones no audio so we will go ahead and just do the middle option i have it muted right now so it's starting me off in the last program i was looking at which is beach so um we have some emi issues inside the house right now because all of the programs start up at like 95 sensitivity so we got to go into menu here real quick go down sensitivity and we can take it down here so this is going to be the general mode actually we'll just hold it it goes pretty fast see if you hold it it has the speedy effect so we're going to do sensitivity and there we go now we can see program one right there in the middle p1 general so that is our general mode on the top there you can see let me kind of move it into the light you can see where it says you know ground ferrous low conductor high conductor so it has a band in the plastic and then you see that dark gray band there that's your discrimination value that's like a disc of seven right there i want to say um let's look what's it at so discrimination of 10 so we can lower it and then we'll watch that that bar will be much lower so you can go into the negatives like Let's see how far we can go. I don't know why I keep pushing the button. I'm so used to just pushing it. You can hold it. It goes much faster. So you can go down to negative 6.4, and that's all your, like, Coke, ceramics, you know, ground-type stuff. And then once you get up to zero and above, then you're getting up into. But we'll run it at zero, and then when we go back, you'll notice the bar now is right above ground and onto ferrous. So we're right at zero and you still have some gray on the ground. So that's like ceramics, it says, and then like Coke and stuff like that. We don't deal with that too often here, um, at least where I live, at least where I live. So as we see on the screen, plus and minus here are gonna change the programs. You see program one with the plus and, or the plus here and minus, that's your left and right down here. So you can cycle through program two, sensitive, sensitive full tones, fast program five is park and you can see park puts a puts a little notch up in there where some foil range is and it adjusts the settings you know recovery speed and stuff like that i can't show you for and we're not going to dive through each different mode but just know what we'll dive through so we got deep high conductors program six program seven the deus mono which is single frequency you got gold field relic diving beach beach sensitive beach p and fast 40 kilohertz and then you have a a a a b b b b b those are my custom modes there that i can switch so what i have is a multi-frequency save custom mode and i'll show you how to save here and then when i switch over to b b b b b that is single frequency mode and that's how i tell twist caps and such from crown caps back and forth from either mode so we can get back to general by just skipping through. So you have 14 now, after the update, 14 modes that you can cycle through and then 12 custom modes that you can create. So quite a few. You see ferrous, non-ferrous bands. You see non-ferrous over here on the right-hand side. And you see the ferrous over here on the left-hand side. You see where it says F 
and in F, you see how it's starting to fill up there on the bottom from EMI, some non-ferrous EMI right there. It'll fill all the way up depending on signal strength. So right now it thinks that there's like a small deep target basically. In the direct middle there, you see it flashing between ground level at zero and then the time, 1506. And then we see the remote battery and coil battery. So it flashes your battery level and then ground level right there. And then over here, we have our ground ID, which is 87, the default, and then ground setting, which is what you are ground balanced to, which is default of 87. So the ID will change. Your ID will be whatever it is as you're swinging, pumping the coil, that will change. Your setting is whatever you are set to on your ground balance. So plus minus, pretty obvious what they do. If you hold down plus right here, you get into your audio category. You can see the audio thing right there. Whatever the last audio option you were, if you hold down this one, the minus down here, oh, it sent me back into it. Minus is audio. So both of them, both of them are audio. They both do audio. Both bottom left, bottom right do audio. And then this is power off. And then this is getting you into a frequency scan. If you hold the top right one, a quick breast. Quick press will get you into the ground balance. So read the manual, go over some of this stuff 10 times. So you see these three up arrows here. They are the, on the bottom here, you see option, menu, ground balance. So that's what each of these. So if you want to get into the menu, you hit the middle one. If you want to get into the option, you hit the right one. If you want to get into your ground balance settings, you hit the ground balance one right there. So if we just hit it real quick, we see we have ground grab. We're at 87. And now the middle button, the middle arrow here becomes a down arrow, which cycles you through settings. So we're cycling down through settings, and this becomes your return or backspace arrow to get you back to your previous menu. So from ground balance, we have grab, which is quick grab. We have tracking on or off with the plus or minus. You see the check mark is on, the X is off. We have ground stabilizer. It goes up to three or down to one. That's just if you're getting a lot of ferrous chatter and whatnot stability in in stable ground basically that will it's kind of like a uh, tracking almost but we also have tracking right there so all right and then from menu that's your ground balance one from menu here and each of these settings in here in the menu is going to change dependent on what program you're on so some of these settings may not appear in the relic program or the park program or in the mono frequency program like mono frequency it doesn't have bottle cap reject that's only in the multi-frequency mode so right here from the menu right away we're going to scroll through we have discrimination we can bump that up in tenths tenths right there so 1.1.2 yeah, it's pretty bonkers you can go up by tenths or hold it down and it cycles through it really quick all right so there you go discrimination we cycle down we are at sensitivity i have it at 22 you can go up to 99 Default in this mode is 95. Default in most of the other modes is 90. So it runs hot. It's a hot high gain detector. Next menu option down is frequency shift. You can do the scan right here, which is gonna do that scan like we did when we held down this button here. Remember quick press was ground balance. Hold it down and it does a frequency shift scan. Or you can go into frequency shift here and do plus or minus with six different shifts there seven different shifts so you can try to find a channel that suits you basically down again is iron volume up to five down to zero down again reactivity which is recovery speed you can go zero which is slowest 0.5 one 1.5 i run 2.5 almost always and then all the way up to five which is let me tell you blazing fast and it cuts down the report on the audio the higher you go Audio response, this is basically, sorry for the glare, getting in there. Uh, audio response, this is going to be your modulation, basically. So if you go to a zero audio response, your targets, deep targets are going to be faint. Okay, so it's modulated. Deep targets will be faint. Small targets will be faint. If you put your audio response all the way up to seven, deep 
small targets are going to sound like they're right on the surface basically it cuts out the module everything's going to sound the same depth at zero you get much better id or or sound sound modulation id from from the yeah the, the sound modulation spit it out you idiot so i run mine at three roughly so three to four um, I find it it's pretty decent at that point. I like some of the smaller targets, the deep targets, to come up just a little bit, but I don't want them to be totally just blowing my eardrums out. So discriminate, and that's it for the menu. So we have some expert menus here on the left. You'll see as we get down right there, you see expert in the discrimination menu. So what's that? We hit that, expert, and now we have tone options. Three tones, two tones. And you can go one tone by just changing the tone break or the audio all the way to zero or 100 kilohertz. It'll, it'll run it down. So there is a single tone. It's just all about the break point. Three tones, four tones, five tones, pitch, which is like a VCO modulated pitch. I like it. Uh, full tones right there, which is 99 tones. I got 99 problems, but a tone ain't one. And there we go. And then expert again, you can adjust the hertz of the pitch right there for ferrous non-ferrous and then you go back here to discrimination and then if we go to five tones let's say this is how i have set up five tones we hit expert again and now we are in our tone breaks and our tone hurts so the type of tone so see now this arrow here left or right this one sends you left and right from the tone break you see to tone one and this one here with the down arrow now sends you down the list for your different tone breaks. So you can see this break one is at 0.2. Tone is 202 hertz. Next one, tone break is 35 on the ID. Tone is 518 hertz. So like a low mid-tone. Tone break at 50, 644 hertz. So like a mid-tone. 72, tone break. 725 hertz. So like a high mid tone and then tone break it, nothing because it's anything 72 and above is 800 hertz so you can take the tones all the way from 993 hertz all the way down to come on baby all the way down to a hundred and a hundred a hundred and a hundred so a hundred hertz and that then if you have it all the way in the lowest that actually becomes iron tone and that will be affected by your audio your iron audio function as well so keep that in mind if you run anything at higher a hundred hertz down there or even a high high conductor at a hundred hertz it's gonna become iron audio so bottle cap rejection we have from zero all the way up to five right there. Sorry about the glare. I'm trying trying to not get it in the glare. Sometimes I drift. My apologies, my apologies, guys. Um, so that's bottle caps. Down again is your notch menu, and then you have your expert notch menu right here. Tone break, tone breaks, and you can throw in some notches here as you want. You can see the notches pretty much go as high as you want for tone breaks. All right, so that's notches. Silencer right here is for ferrous ground interference, basically. So you have silencer. It's kind of like a iron bias on the Equinox, that and bottle caps together. So this is large objects, large iron objects. This is going to help with that. Definitely horseshoes, stuff like that. Um, and then we are down to the tone options right there. So that is pretty much that. Like I said, some of these options will not be in every category here. Like if we go to Deus Mono now, we notice we don't have bottle caps anymore. Um, if we go into expert here, yeah. See, no bottle caps. We just have silencer, tones, notch, no bottle caps. So there you go. Certain programs have certain things. Now we have the option menu over here to the right. So quick press of that. Don't press it too long. You'll turn your detector off. So from the option menu, we have expert, down, and back return again. So 
from audio here, we're going to do, oh, I'm sorry, we're going to select first. Well, I'm sorry, select, not expert, select. So from select for audio, we have audio out for the remote. Or we can do this arrow here to the right, and it will be the headphones audio out now the bone conductors or the wired headphones or your WS6 wired headphones now the audio out for that so you can run them at zero you should run them at zero to save battery if you're not using that device like don't use your speaker if you have headphones on the audio out should be zero um, don't have audio out to your wireless speaker if you're not gonna you know your, your headphones if you don't have them on your head and you're just using this you'll save the battery if you run anything you're not using at zero okay and then we have the equalizer um, select you can do an equalizer for your different bands there I just leave it default I don't really want to mess anything up as far as the tones go I, I just leave it default myself to each their own and then we have audio type PWM is the classic dais tones and we will go over that in the performance review video and then square tone sounds like an equinox basically square tone sounds like an equinox so and then there is pitch mode when you're in the five four three two tone you have pitch mode in that tone as well so that's like a third tone option technically so i much prefer oh man i left it on uh i, I left it on square we definitely don't want that so pwn and then we're back to audio out and then we have settings is the next one down. So we cycle through here, the middle ones. We have audio settings, program pairing, audio settings, program pairing. So audio, we went through that. Settings, select. Now we have diving to lock it out. The display, don't do that, or to lock out the buttons. Display, we have backlight on three seconds, 10 seconds before it turns off. And then off, we have brightness. For the contrast, I run mine at five. If you run it all the way up, you can see it blacks out the screen. And if you run it all the way down, it kind of grays it out. I like mine at five. It seems to bring in the best of it. And then brightness is for your backlight. And since I have it off right now, it's not going to work. So let me go back here. Backlight will run it 10 seconds. And we'll see how and they say it sips the battery the backlight you can see it there they say it really sips the battery you can go from 20 all the way down so but i don't know i, I run it off i don't hunt at night i always hunt in the daytime so i just run mine off and off on the timer as well so contrast brightness backlight is in the settings there for display then we have language i have mine set to english i'm not messing it I don't even want to press anything right now in language, so just leave it, and then you have a clock. You can adjust your clock right there, and then we have the profile. So you saw the Ferris, non-Ferris, horseshoe type screen, the U. Well, this is the XY screen now, and let's go back and look at it. Now you see the XY screen there. You have the little target in the middle, and if the line goes this way, it will be non-Ferris. If it goes this way, so this is a ferris box here, a ferris box top left and bottom right are ferris. Ferris, ferris, top right non-ferris, bottom left non-ferris. So you'll see squiggly stuff and you'll see different shapes and it lets you know a flat line is most likely a good target, but not always, it lies to you. Um, you'll have to figure it out for yourself and there's zoom levels you can zoom in if you want as well through there so that is in the settings select it was xy under profile and then go terrain that is for the cell phone app i don't use it you want to use it to eat your own uh, frequency scan manual update the detector you need to have it plugged in via that thing to update it instructions in the manual and online watch a video i'm sure somebody has one on how to update the firmware you will need to do it if yours is not firmware 6 and then info information it just tells you the model the you know everything right there so there you go i want to say there was some more yeah more info serial number battery voltage level stuff like that that's pretty cool actually so i've never seen that first time i've seen that so all right and then diving locks it out so i don't want to lock it out or anything like that so 
that is basically everything in the settings and then in the program here when you select it say you're in general program and you're like hey I don't want it to because all the first 14 programs reset every time you restart your detector only your saved program saves. so you hit program select you can hit save select and then here I can cycle through the empty slots or I can over oh, it looks like I can overwrite 13 and 14 are actually ones that you can overwrite I may overwrite that beach one I'll never use it so fast 40 I doubt I'll ever use I'll probably overwrite these eventually so a a a a b b b b so let's say I want to overwrite this beach program here number 13 I hit select and it's going to hit replace I'm going to hit yes or no I'm going to hit yes and then it's going to have you name it so you can name it with plus and minus and then go forward or back a letter with these two here there we go see you can go forward and delete it or you can add p p p p p you know whatever and then hit valid and it'll validate that program that i just totally created and i'm never going to use so i'll name it to something else or just rename it to beach p or whatever so there we go that is how you rename things in the program and save programs right there program select and you can delete programs too program or change the name so delete we'll hit select and we'll just go delete that p1 yes so i'm never going to use it so there we go it bumps you right back out to the main option menu there so that is pretty much everything pairing is for the coil and for the headphones i don't want to unpair anything right now so i'm not going to show you how to do that um i'm pretty sure i can get away with just hitting select yeah and it's going to show you my coil and then you can pair the second coil um, you can edit that. I, I don't want to do anything to that, unpair anything by accident. So, yeah, there is the menu. I have pretty much covered 90% of it in a nutshell. Get your manual and, uh, you know, read it 10 times, guys, 10 times. This, this video, as much as I'm trying to help, it doesn't do it justice on everything that's in here. It, you're going to have to test, test, test like crazy and all that good stuff. But anyways, there is the remote control part one of the review video. I hope you enjoy it. Sorry for the glare here and there. Um, if it's too bad, I'll go re-edit it and shoot it all over again. But hopefully not. It's 20 minutes of video here, 40 minutes total part one. Performance review hopefully up by this weekend. And we will show you what all the rad capabilities of this menu and coil put together do. Hope you enjoy this video. The Hunter GT signing off. I will see you on the next video.